Hello again. Today we're going to combine some techniques that we've already seen to get more and more interesting things to happen. It's important to remember that all programming languages are made up of quite a simple set of commands, but it's how you put them together that's going to make more and more complicated things happen. Let's start by looking at the for loop again. Remember that we have the loop header, which contains the initialization section, the condition that we test against, and the update code. Inside the loop, we have the body statements that are going to be executed each time we pass the test. Now, those statements can be just about any processing command. What does that mean? It means we can put a for loop inside another for loop. But why would we want to do that? Let's look at a real world example, calling the role for students in the school. We know that we have so many classrooms and each classroom should hopefully contain a certain number of students. So what we want to do is to go to each classroom, call out each student's name and if they're there, mark the role. Now can you see the structure there? For each classroom, for each student, call the role. If present, mark role as present, else mark as absent. You'll see that we're using the for loops with two different loop variables because we want to change the value of two different things, the classroom and the student. We often refer to loops like this as being nested because one sits within the other like eggs in a nest. Another name for these loops is two-dimensional because we can change two of the program dimensions like x and y value in the statements contained within both loops. But how do these values change? Well, let's look at an example. For these examples, we're going to base our changes on the x and y values on the display. I've called the variables x and y to reduce confusion, but it's important to remember that you could call your variables anything. What else is important is that when you use the point statement, you use the variable that you want to control x as the first argument and the variable you want to control y as the second. In this example, we're drawing red dots across the screen. But what if we wanted to draw this line of dots more than once? Well, that's right, we can use nested for loops. We're going to use color to tell whether we're changing the x value or the y value. And we're going to move from black to red to show changes for the x variable, and we're going to move from blue to green for changes in the y value. Remember that these color changes will combine. So as a reminder, here is that first piece of code again with the color change. See how the dots get redder like before? Now we put another loop inside this to change the y values as well. Now we're seeing x and y change as the for loop moves along. When y is small at the top of the picture, we just see x moving from black to red as before. As y gets bigger, we see the influence of the green as we add more green. Don't forget that in processing, combining red and green in a stroke statement will actually give you yellow, which is why where x and y are both at their largest, we see that yellow corner. But we aren't restricted to looking at color alone. In the next section, we'll look at changing two different elements of your pictures, color and size.